in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad as we prepare our hearts and minds.
world that he gave his only and begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I read John 3, 16. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and the doers of this divine and holy word. Amen.
will set an example that you may go to God for our being here. And I want you to know that uh, sometimes we think that it is easy to stand before a group of people and uh, do various things, but it is not as easy as it appears. Now, I've been standing behind the sacred desk for some 43 years, and I still get nervous. You never get to that point where you're not a little nervous. Because I've learned that Murphy's Law is always in effect. If it can go wrong, it will.
seven, and I think the other 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 night game is going to be a Monday night game. So there's no excuse. You don't have to worry about the Vikings game. You can come on out, bring your friends, your neighbor, and whoever you can think of, and let's make this a joyous and happy celebration. Now we're having, uh, I don't know, what are the children ready to do? We're done. Y'all done already?
Oh, no. 
that tells me a lot that about what God is doing in your life. Amen. 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 I like to reference God who keeps me in spite of my faults, in spite of all the shortcomings that I have. God keeps on. Thank God for that. I'd like to acknowledge the Pastor Robson, the angel of this house. He stayed on this moon. Thank you, Pastor Robson. I know we talked about last week about going on vacation and doing some traveling. That's all right when you get out there and get his vacation and then as long as he come on back to continue to be with us. Amen. I'm going to be good back. Good back. You tell the story about Pastor Griffin. He said, man, we ain't seen you. I'm not calling this week. God, we ain't seen you in two or three weeks. You still out of town? If you ain't, I'm going to say, well, we're looking for you. Thank you. 
father see you be mighty kind to me. And the man thing, because he hadn't had nobody be that gracious to him. The moral of the story is that folks do be kind to you and catch you off guard. And it's surprising to me that thanks and being thankful can go a long way. Can I share something with y'all today that I got a little professional?
some cases they have literally gone off the limit. I say this all the time that this is an intellectual church. So allow me to push my argument a, a little far. People don't even say please anymore. Yeah, how about your, your walk? Lord knows, nobody says thank you. Oh, y'all ain't gonna pray with me today. Right. Right. No, I have opened up doors for people that are going into the mall and they're going to the grocery store and they pass by and I got what even standing there. All right. Not a word, though. Thank you, or anything comes from their lips. Yeah, I think that. And I'm the only one preaching to myself. You ain't, you, you ain't never done something for somebody and gave them a ride and they didn't even, they just got out the car. No gas money. Oh, yeah, they didn't forget to tell you to pick them up. Nobody praying with me. 
me, but you ought to be thankful that you had me yes. Turn the switch. You come along. Could have been snowing today. That's right now. But guess what? Sun is shining. Maybe dark in your life, but the sun is still shining. And I know you're in a place right now where you can't feel it or see it, but God is still good. In spite of it. And coming into this Thanksgiving season, don't just think about the difference. Don't just think about the church. Don't just think about the gathering of the family members. Think about all that God has done in your life. And you know that you could have been there. But you're still here. And I know I've been on the series about taking God and just looking back and reflecting about how you could have been there. Because of season that I'm in, you know, studying that I've been doing, it's about being great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I want us to be a, a grateful church. Yes, sir. I want us to be kind hearted yes, and love. Oh, yes, uh, God, in my book, I've been praying about this. Yes, the friendly church, why I got hit, but I want us to be even friendlier. I want folks when they walk in and say, I don't know what's wrong with them folks, but they all go friendly in that church. Trying to mind me well far ago, huh? Go in there, I can't even give you a dub before they stand high. Passing out suckers and asking me I help you. I'm like, oh, this is a friendly thing here. Until I get that over there. Thank you. 
the poor. You got to help the poor. The clear went the other way. But God did something majestic. You ought to be able to say thank you. We live in a place now where we just think that we deserve what we got. Talk about grandma in a way. It was a blessing to have two and three pairs of shoes. Now we get up the church and we can't even decide what shoes we want to wear. We get up and can't decide what suit we want to put on. We get up and can't decide what dress we want to wear. Oh, we get so cocky when we don't even know what room we want to sleep in because we live in houses and mansions. And I know we're guilty of it. Because me and my wife are doing some remodeling right now. We can't decide if we want to make the extra room or guest room or which room we want to make the guest room. That is a blessing in the sky. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, huh? but the small things in the air of life, huh? you have to be grateful to God huh? yeah. for those things. Yeah, because I learned, and I've been a 
their church long enough. And I used to hear Pastor Officer, I ain't giving them church all my money because pastors don't be riding in a Mercedes in a living in a big old house. I don't know what church they belong to, but we all just think. But I've learned to once it's out of my hands, the blessing is still in contact. Because as long as I do my responsibility, as long as I trust God to what God's going to do with me, I'm not going to worry about what man has planned. Because I'm going to leave that between him and God. I'm just going to do my part and a part of it. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But you got to put the wrestling in your mind. Because you only got a little bit. Uh, and you can't see it being multiplied. Uh, but when it's in the hands of God, uh, things work a little different. Uh, and if I had a praying church, uh, there would be somebody in here. Uh, and then when you turn it over to God, uh, it's going to multiply. Uh, I've been there. Uh, gave it up. Uh, and now God has blessed me. Uh, and I don't know who I'm preaching to. Uh, Jesus is going to do something. Yeah, right, right. 
And when I give to the church and I give to God, I don't know what they're going to do, but I know God's going to do something. You've got to just keep providing for God. This is God's house. And the only reason the doors stay open is the giving of the saints. I'm glad this little boy was a, a gift. Never forget when New Orleans had flooded. I remember Pastor Moore on second up the offer. And he asked us, those that didn't want to give, he said, would you rather be a giver or a receiver at the time of the flood? I'd rather be a giver because that means that I got it to give. And I know my folks that keep tithing and keep giving to the church because God keep blessing those and keep replenishing them. And the one that keep giving that same dollar only can give that dollar because you won't step out and trust God. But I wish I had a prayer church. I, I wish somebody was able to step out uh, and say, I'm going to give up my two defense and my five body laws. I'm going to trust God and what he's going to do. Church. Well, I don't know about y'all, but 
You ought to be not just praying for your own family, but you ought to be praying for your church members. Yeah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When one hurt, we all hurt. When one fall down, we all fall down. And I think that's a good place to go. Because God's been good to somebody. He's been good to you. And he's been good to me. When I look back over this old running life, I can't help but to give God thanks. Never know what God was going to do in my life. But now, that is there. I'm more thankful and grateful than ever. Now that I know my soul has been saved, I can give God a hand clap of praise. Because if he had not died, did he die? If he had not died, what would I be? If it had not been for the blood, where would I be? There was no nothing but the blood. The blood covered every one of my sins. I was headed to hell. But God turned some things around. And when he turned it around, my soul got happy. Because it was one Friday, one Friday night. He died. Yes, he died. Did he die? Yes, he died. Stay there. Sound anymore. All day. Sound. Stay there. What did he get? He was dead.
gracious and eternal God. Lord, here we are. First of all, we want to give thanks to you. Lord, we thank you because we know that you're still sitting on high and looking down on us. Lord, we know that you're God that holds all power in your hands. And Lord, we trust that you can do all things. Lord, we know that we can do all things because we know that you're God that holds all power. Lord, we want to turn our situation over to you. Lord, these children came because we're trusting that you can hold them and keep them when they can't keep them too. Lord, we know that the enemy is wicked and come to steal, kill, and destroy. Your God keeps on blessing us. Lord, we're we'll in your hands. No one can block us up. So we're we'll putting these children in your hands right now. We ask that you work in a mighty way. Lord, we count on you because we know that you're already working it out. Lord, when we leave here, we know that you're moving in a mighty way. Lord, we know that you're God that can bless us because we already see your hand in We see your open blind eyes. We send you healing us. Lord, we send you walk of war. Lord, we know you hold all miracles. And we're asking that you do it for us. And with all our sin, we give you all the praise, the honor, and we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen.
far as Thanksgiving is <clears throat> We know the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas can be trying time for, for folks, especially for those that lost loved ones. Some that will be experiencing the first holidays without loved ones. So let's keep each other in work. And you never know what folks are going through at this time. <clears throat> they say suicide is, the numbers are skyrocketing with us. We know the evil and the wickedness of the enemy is running around. So let us keep one another in prayer. We can lift each other up in these holiday times. Once again, be thankful to God that that is good this year. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Grace to the eternal God. Lord, once again, we just want to give thanks to you. Lord, we thank you because we didn't come here because we're playing the church. Lord, we came because we got real problems. And we want to talk to a real God. Lord, we want to talk to you because we know that you're a God that can do something, do something about it. Lord, when man ran out of options, that's when you show your mighty works. And Lord, we ask that you work in our lives right now. Somebody said, Reverend, you pray, pray for me. Lord, I don't know that situation, but you're God that knows all things. And we ask that you. Touch them right now. Lord, somebody came in with a heavy heart today. But we ask that they be done in the way that they can. Lord, when it's all said and done, we get praise, honor, and glory. Lord, may the grace of God be sweet to you know the Holy Spirit rest on the Bible.
Thank you. 